Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Y'all, uh, today we are doing week number eight. Hello, everybody. Today is uh, April the 8th. Today is Bailey's birthday. Bailey, if you happen to stop by, happy birthday, doll baby. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Hello, everybody. Uh, wow, I see uh, we need to pray for Miss Dari, who has a, a wisdom tooth issue. That is painful. Believe me, I know. I've had a wisdom tooth removed and it was horrible pain before that i'm hoping that you can get to the dentist soon miss sylvia i hope you're feeling better soon beverly you went to your uh, pt i'm so glad you're doing so good hello everybody i see we had snow in iowa hello everybody uh i've been reading all of the chat as i got set up for today hello y'all come on in and get situated i turned on my little mini iron so it's warming up before we move on, I am going to pull up my pieces for today on the screen before I forget. It looks like a hot mess, y'all. <laughs> it looks really confusing. I hope you can make sense of it all. Uh, many of you are making your own numbers and you have your own little system going on anyway. So this is just a bunch of mambo jumbo on the screen. But for those of you who are happening to copy my numbers, this is what we are working on today. We get to do a whole flower down in the middle of the quilt today and then start on another flower. And then we have a couple leaves and a bunch of sky pieces. Hello, everybody. I want to thank my moderators today. Thank you all so much as we get started. Thank you for keeping an eye on the chat. Hello, everybody. Come on in. Yes. Okay, so we have sky pieces, we have leaf and stem pieces. Then uh, I have one center of a flower we're doing. You see that's the big A, the big purple A on the screen. And then uh, all of one flower, and then part of another. So we're going to be working in a couple of different colors today. Take a guess as to what colors I'm making these flowers. Take a wild guess. I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me through this quilt. I know many of you are not even going to ever make this quilt, but you're still hanging out with us. Thank you so much. And I know many of you are making this quilt. I've seen the pictures. Y'all are doing so good. Yes, y'all guessed it. Purples. <laughs> I'm doing a darker purple. Uh, the flower, the complete flower we're doing today is a darker purple. And then I'm doing a lighter purple for the... Uh, for the other flower. Hello, everybody. Ah, oh, I love seeing y'all on Fridays. So uh, these are the pieces. And uh, if you really want to use my number system, all of that chaos, you can come back and pause the screen or take a snapshot with your phone. I kind of want to show you something before we move on today with our pieces for this week. Y'all, we have one more week of pieces next Friday. Vicki, you started yours. I was wondering if you had started it yet. Uh, before we move on, I wanna show you what we're gonna be doing next Thursday evening, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Y'all know we've been doing a free mug rug of the month with Easter coming up. What is Easter on the 17th, I think? Thursday, I think it's the 14th. There's already the thumbnail up on my channel if you want to go set a reminder, but let me show you in case you haven't seen it yet. If you haven't been on Facebook. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, y'all, I'm calling this a mug rug because it's uh, a fairly nice shaped uh, little quilty <laughs> that could uh, go on your desk or your table. It's kind of long. But uh, this one is actually going in my mom's camper. It is already spoken for. She has claimed it. So it's going to hang up as a little wall quilt. But uh, this is what we're going to do as the mug rug of the month for April. I have put down, if, uh, if you want to grab it, the materials you need to gather, the cross pieces, and uh, the template for cutting a perfect oval shape. Look how perfect that is. Now, there are no written instructions because I'm going to walk you through how to make it next Thursday evening. If you can't 
make it to the live. You can always come back on the replay, right? Uh, but this is down in the description box. And if you have a cutting machine like a Brother Scan and Cut, Silhouette, Cricut, any of those cutting machines, and you want to get the cutting file, that is already uploaded on my Etsy site. And there's a link for that down below too, right? But isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. Yes, uh, here's the back of mine. I did a little blanket stitch to uh, sew down my applique on this. And then I just did a little meandering stitch all the way around. And I did a bias binding on mine, which turned out fairly perfect. I was quite impressed with myself on this one. And uh, I'm going to prepare a bias binding for Thursday, but we might end up just doing it a real simple beginner way without a binding. I haven't made up my mind yet. So there's a couple of different ways that you could finish this, right? Hello, everybody. Jackie, you caught up. Yay. Some spaces are too wide. That's all right. I have some wide spaces in mind too. And uh, I'm going to figure out a way to fix them. The beauty of the hummingbird quilt is that uh, it's an art quilt. So we can do so much with it, right? So, yep, this is uh, loaded down in the description box. If you want to grab this and get your pieces ready to hang out with me Thursday night. I'll be making another one for myself <laughs> since my mom claimed that one. Okay, so uh, let me move over. Let me turn this. <laughs> and uh, I do have this iron warming up. Y'all don't mind my pressing board. She is dirty. <laughs> I've had so much going on and so much to do. I keep meaning to take this cover off and throw it in the wash, but that's just not going to happen anytime in the near future. Nikki said, can you put instructions on YouTube for the people that are not on Facebook? Nikki, if you go down in the description box, you don't need to go on Facebook. The link is already down below. Now, to keep these Mug Rug of the Month patterns free, I have not typed out long instructions. I'm going to show you in the video how to make it. But yep, you can grab it today, Nikki. It's right down in the description box. These are the pieces that we're doing today. And uh, I've already traced all the position pieces. Let's see. Let's get that up on the screen. There we go. Yeah, see, I have some wider spaces I'm going to have to address at some point or just decide to leave it. I'm not sure, but I'll probably figure out a way to fix that. All right, lay her out nice and flat, Lisa. There we go. I think you can see my lines pretty good today. And uh, see if I can get that on the screen a little bit right down here in the corner. And my iron shoes warmed up. Okay, everybody. So let's bring in the pieces for today. I thought today uh, I would first start in the middle of this flower. There's only one piece for that. So let's go ahead and get the center of this flower in. And she is going to go right there. And I figured I'd start right there just in case I had to trim my petals uh, to fit. <laughs> and we're pressing. Ella, yeah, that black marker trick really comes in handy, doesn't it? <laughs> I have done that several times already on this quilt. And I'll probably have to do it a few more times. I do think my fabric shifted in one of the weeks. And so I'm getting gaps and some of my pieces are closer together, but we're gonna make it work. All right, yep, she's warm. 
So there's the center of that flower. You see it right there. And then, ooh, we're starting with one of the flowers. I think that's the dark purple. So we're going to be working right here, this whole complete flower right there. Let's see, I think it would probably be easier to put these in place and then fuse them. What do you think? Because some of them look kind of really similar, don't they? So let's do that today. Ooh, the dark purple. Let's see. So glad I saw this fabric sitting on my shelf because I think that's going to be so pretty on there. All right, so there's my pieces, and uh, we can go ahead and start fusing these in place. Yeah, that purple is pretty, isn't it? I do believe each one of my flowers is going to be a completely different color. <laughs> Although, if I would have noticed this purple in my stash, I probably would have done all of my flowers with this fabric. I think that would have been gorgeous. And I had enough of it to do that. But, in this hummingbird's world, they're all different. <laughs> the flowers are all different. Yeah, I can tell you I am super excited to do that cross mug rug with you. Uh, it was fairly easy to make. The trickiest part about it was the bias binding, but if you've done a few bias bindings, uh, then you should have it down packed. We'll go over an easier way to finish it without doing the binding. But if you're wondering uh, how do you make bias binding, I do have a video on how you can make lots and lots of bias binding using a fat quarter here on my channel if you want to check that out before Thursday and get you some bias binding made. Celeste said it wouldn't be a Lisa creation without the purple. I thought I was going to stay away from the purple, but you know, I just gravitate right back to it. <laughs> I said in the beginning I was going to work outside of my normal color range, right? But here we are. We're right back in it. <laughs> I just couldn't resist myself. Beverly, I'm so glad your uh, physical therapy went good. You'll be back sewing before you know it. It actually kind of works out to pre-lay down all your pieces like this. At least with this flower. Look, y'all, I'm getting really sophisticated. I got my little Dollar Tree poker thing. <laughs> oh. 
Yes, one more week of pieces. And then the major workload of this quilt will be done. I think we're going to have some fun doing the quilting and some embellishing. I'll address some of the issues that I have going on in this quilt. We'll figure out what we're going to do with those. If we do anything, I really want to do something in that gap. That gap there really pops out at me. I think so too, Pat. If I had have seen this over there and been paying close attention, I think all of the flowers with this purple fabric would have been stunning. Yes, it's a little weeding tool, <laughs> but it comes in handy for so many other things. All right, so let's get the paper off of these last two pieces. Uh, I got the borders on my t-shirt quilt. I don't know if you can see that behind me up on the wall, but I did that this morning. I did get my tweezers just in case. <laughs> I am super prepared this morning. We're actually camping uh, until the 21st. We are at a local campground not too far away. Well, it's about 15 minutes away. So I'm commuting home to go to work every day, <laughs> which seems kind of counterproductive, right? Uh, but that's what we're doing. So I got up early, came home early, and uh, yes, I've printed some sublimation photos. I put borders on that quilt and got it all squared up. I've been working on my Patreon block of the month. So I've gotten a lot done today. Cindy, I know, I might add some embroidery or beads or rhinestones something fun to fill in that gap all right so there's my purple flower on the screen it actually looks kind of dark just to let you know in real life uh, there's a little bit more pink shining through there the next pieces are the beginning of this flower that comes in sort of off-center of the middle of the quilt, right? Let's see if we can scoot this over some. There we go. So we have some pieces that are completed pieces. See those? And then some of the petals were cut off and the middle of this flower is just cut off a little bit. So I'm not doing the middle of this flower, not this week. That'll be next week. So since that worked out so well, let's go ahead and lay these pieces out. There's my light purple. And then some of these, C, all right, that goes, all right, the little tiny pieces we're gonna wait because I might have to trim those to get them to fit. So let's get these bigger pieces in there. There's A. And B. Ah, 
All right, Miss Jane, have a good day at work. I hope it's an awesome day. Thank you, Dari, for sharing the link for the bias binding. Okay, so here's the big pieces for this week of this middle flower. Oh, I lost my tool. Where did it go? <laughs> I lost it. It's missing. I really like the contrast of the light purple next to the dark purple. All right, so let's take a look at these little tiny pieces. Remember last week, uh, we were talking a little bit towards the end of the video last week about how we can eliminate some of the small pieces, right? Mainly in the sky area. I've done that this week, and we'll get to that here in a minute. But some of these pieces just can't be avoided, uh, like these little flower pieces in this light purple. If you look, the paper just popped right off of there. If you look, this flower petal bends over kink, like that. And there's a little separation where it bends over. That is this little piece right here on the mirror imaged uh, copy, right? And it just fits right in there. And it just gives an indication that the flower petal is bending over. Where is that little, here it is. <laughs> that really helps just to keep it right in place. So it's just bending over just a little bit. And then we have these little pieces, which I did not cut. So let's do that. They're small, so it won't take very long. All right, so we have F. is this middle piece right there. Celeste, you just got the little mini iron. Isn't it handy? It really is. All right, so the F goes right there. Looks like my camera is glitching. I don't know why. Hopefully it stops. That's aggravating. <laughs> All right, so there's that piece. And then we have G, which I wanted to show you. G is right in the middle of these two pieces, right? There's a little tiny sliver. I call that a flower piece. You could call it a sky piece if you want some separation between those petals, right? I don't think you would be wrong either way you go. I'm going to call it a flower piece. Ooh, this is where that would come in handy. See that? All right. So let's get that flower piece in there. And then 
one more flower piece for this week, and that is H right there. Now we do have some gaps. Those are going to be sky pieces. There we go. And H comes in right there. All right. Y'all would be so proud of me. I've not been throwing my little scraps of paper on the floor. So when we're done with the live, I have very little cleanup to do. Usually everything gets brushed right off into the floor. All right, so that's the beginning of this flower. We're going to finish that flower up next week. Next up, we have the leaves and the stem pieces. So let's bring in this stem. And let's see if I have to do any trimming. Can you move your piece up a little bit? Is that better? Hopefully that's better. All right, I have a feeling we're gonna have to do some trimming with this piece. Yes, just a little bit because see how it's touching these pieces right there and right there. I just want to thin that down just a little bit. So I'm going to take a sliver off. Just a sliver all the way down. Kind of like the freedom of this art quilt <laughs> where you can just do things like this on the fly especially after doing that t-shirt quilt where everything is very precise all the seam allowance have all the seam allowances have to stay nice and true for everything to work so you really have to be on your toes right all right i'm not going to trim it again i'll use the marker trick that quilt, you really had to be on your toes, right? This is kind of nice, not having to be so precise with everything. All right, so I'm just going to anchor that bottom and fuse as we go up. Hopefully my arm is not in the way. There we go. Just keep in mind when the live is over, mm -hmm. when I plug in my regular iron, I will be going over these pieces one good little time after that and right here I'm just going to thin out this sky piece just a little bit before we move on because I don't want to forget see how we fix that Ta -da. all right my leaves I just cut in uh, a whole shape, right? I traced the whole shape of the leaf with the line in the middle. You could keep that a whole piece, right? That would be gorgeous. But uh, my other leaves I did separate, so I'm just going to cut them apart now.
And that one's going to go right there. That is the G3 on the bottom. G for green. <laughs> And then the G2 goes right above it. All right, let's keep you in place so you don't do any shifting. There we go. Small little sliver right in the middle. And then we have this other leaf right here, and this is uh, all the green pieces for this week. Again, I traced it as one complete shape. Uh, so for those of you who are trying to eliminate the amount of fussy cutting, look how pretty that would be, just as the full shape, right? I am gonna separate mine. And let's see, we're working right there on the mirror image copy. G4 goes right on the top, like that. That green really pops next to the purple. And then G5 goes right next to it. And let me hold that in place. There we go. Now at this point, all the rest of today's pieces are sky pieces. And I thought I would get these intricate pieces in place. And if I had to do a lot of trimming, it would be on those sky pieces, right? That seemed to make sense to my brain. <laughs> All right, so there we are with that. And then this week I'm working with my teal blue fabrics and we have quite a bit of sky pieces. 17 comes in right there. Yep, all right, so see that? I'm gonna have to, this is right in the middle is where I'm having all of my issues, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some major trimming with these pieces today, I think, in the sky area. Let's try that. And let's take a little bit off of this side. There we go. All right, that's better. Yep, Miss Hazel, that right there is the mirror image because I used freezer, uh, not freezer paper, heat and bond to trace my pieces. So when I numbered them, those are the numbers that I used. I know it's a little tricky, <laughs> tricky, tricky. All right, 16 comes in right here. Let's see. Yep, we're gonna have to trim some right off the bottom of that one. That's better.
Bye, Miss Celeste. Have a wonderful weekend. All right, there's that one. 19 comes in right there. Sometimes, let me see if I can find the little pin. A little pin. Does this one work? Yes. All right, so let's do this. This might be easier for you if you uh, just put your pieces in place and mark on them where you want to trim off. That might be helpful too. Instead of just pulling it off to the side and whacking it off <laughs> like I've been doing. You could mark right on them. So this is one of the pieces I wanted to show you, okay? Uh, remember last week we talked about combining sky areas. Right here, if you're looking at the mirror imaged version, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, the piece I've numbered 19, and you'll see 20 is circled, and it points to this little triangle piece. Well, instead of cutting that little triangle piece, I traced the outline shape of 19 and 20 together. See that? 19 and 20 together. I just traced all of that and just combined it. So I eliminated cutting that small little piece there. There we go, and down that goes. We'll do piece number 14 next, and that's gonna come in right here. And let's do this little pin trick again, because I wanna just take off a little bit right there just a smidgen. Not too much. Ooh, I really like that light piece next to this purple flower. All right, and then we have piece number one, piece number one. All right, piece number one is going to complete uh, a little bit underneath this bird, which we worked on two weeks ago, right? That was not a complete piece, and so now we are working into that. Yes, okay. There we go. Piece number two comes in right below it. Let me see. Nope, I'm not going to trim that one at all. I might have to trim the piece below it. Piece number three comes in right below piece number two. It's got a little bit of a curve right there. That's going to go around one of the flower petals. 
Actually, I don't have to trim that at all, so we're good. I was almost thinking, y'all, <laughs> don't hold me to it, but one of the possibilities, have you ever, uh, I'm sure you have, back in the day, it used to be the big thing to do on sweatshirts and t-shirts, puffy paints, puffy fabric paints. I almost thought about coming in and doing little dots of puffy paint. Maybe like dot, 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 right in that section. That's a little gap that I want to fix. It would almost look like beads without having to sew beads. <laughs> All right. Here is another piece that I combined. So let's take a look at this one uh, right here five with the circle on it that's a little tiny triangle right in between these flower petals four and then six comes in right there right i combined five four and six into one piece i just traced the whole thing the whole outline and combined that into one piece Ooh, Ella said, wonder what you could use to make it look like dew drops on the flowers. Ooh, wouldn't that be pretty? I almost wonder if the puffy paints wouldn't do that. All right, so that piece is going to come right in there. Ooh, Sylvia said sequins. Oh, I have a bunch of sequins. I don't know that they're exactly the right color for this quilt, though. I'll have to take a look. I think they're like a rose gold color, which are gorgeous. I'd have to see if they, if they really go with this. All right, and now we're working with little pieces, y'all. Piece number seven is going to fill in this gap underneath of that petal that sort of turned over. Ooh, Valerie said a pearlized paint. That would be pretty. Number 15, 15, all right, we're coming back up here. all right that's where all of my trimming is going to happen right here <laughs> this piece is actually supposed to be much bigger see watch this 18 that's cut exactly right but see all of the shifting that's happened uh look how much bigger the Look how much bigger it is. Is does that where? Yeah, that's where that goes. All right, let's do some trimming. A 
let's do some trimming. There we go. I knew there was going to be somewhere in this week that I was going to run into some pieces that would have to be really changed. There we go. <laughs> okay, we have a sliver of a piece. That was piece number 10. Piece number 10. Okay, it's going to go right in between these two flower petals. We're gonna have a little bit of sky just poking through this flower here at the bottom. Thirteen. Where do you go? Oh, okay. <laughs> We're coming back up right there. We got little itsy bitsy pieces all over the place filling in gaps at this point. See how that separates the flower like that? I like that. We have piece number nine. It's going to come in right there. Let's just hold that down so it doesn't move. Stay right there. <laughs> so do y'all have any big plans for the weekend? The campground we're staying at has a putt-putt golf course and the kids are coming for dinner tomorrow. So we're going to do a little putt-putt tomorrow and that should be fun. Piece number eight is going to come in right there. And it's a little sliver of a piece. Oh, it's cold in Ohio. Vicki says, no plans for the weekend. Sylvia, I hope not. I hope not. I hope you feel better quick. All right, we have two more pieces for this week, and uh, these pieces are going to come in uh, here and here at the bottom, 11 and 12. And I didn't want to lose them, so I didn't cut them out. Tiny. Uh, I don't know if y'all are just like hunkering down because of snow and coldness. I don't know if you saw I put out the rest of the uh, t-shirt quote video putting that together. You could check that out this weekend. I also did a paper piece churn dash block this, uh, this past week. 
that video is out. All right, 11 is here. It's funny the difference this small little piece makes. You almost think, oh, it's so little, I'm not going to worry about it. But look at the difference that it makes. Ooh, Ella, you'll be making pillows soon. Silva, you're still searching for shiny fabric for your hummingbird. Oh, Vicki, you got the uh, paper piece churn dash. I'm going to tell you, uh, I've done my last two churn dash blocks with that paper piece pattern. And they turn out perfectly, exactly 12 and a half by 12 and a half. Yep, right down here, right in this purple flower. You could almost get away without doing this piece, but it's funny how this one little piece makes such a difference. Watch that. Ta-da! Bam! Light through those petals. So there we go. That was the last piece for this week. Kind of a lot of pieces <laughs> and I cannot guarantee you that there won't be a lot of pieces next week that's kind of been the trend the last couple of weeks and it's been a while since I finished this pattern so uh, to be really honest I don't have it printed out and uh, I can't tell you for sure if it's a lot of pieces or not <laughs> I do know the next week we'll be finishing this flower here, right? And then look, I've got this pink flower that's going to come down and fill in a good portion of this. And then uh, two centers of the flower left to do. So I'm kind of thinking between that flower and finishing this flower that uh, there isn't a whole bunch of sky pieces. Let me see if I can find this. Where is it? I don't know what I did with it. I had the print off. Give me a second. It's somewhere here. Here it is. Let's take a look at what we have left, right? So we just finished uh, from here over on this flower. And we have this leaf and sky going up through here. So next week we have lots of flower petals for this pink flower here. And uh, quite a few flower petals coming down through here. We have a leaf and a stem piece next week and very little blue pieces. And then that's it, y'all. Actually, I think next week is going to probably go by pretty quick right here in this box that's what we're doing next week sherry um i got my little iron from joanne fabrics it is the uh dritz mini iron i've had this one for years uh but they still have them there i imagine if you have a quilt shop near you that they probably might have it too Yeah, those little pieces really do make everything pop, right? What a what a difference that they make. Just light coming through there. So that's what we've got left. And then, uh, yeah. So let me just do a little shimmy. On down I don't think the whole thing's gonna fit in the screen that's what happens once we start getting some size to the projects 
they don't all fit in the screen anymore. But there's my hummingbird. I am excited, really excited to start quilting this. I do think that I've committed to free motion quilting this. Um, and so I'm hoping that you join along with me, even if that's not what you want to do with yours. Uh, I hope that you still follow along. Yes. So uh, we'll do those pieces next week. And then uh, I'm going to come in and probably baste it. And then we'll start quilting the week after. A lot of the fixes and the filling in uh, we might do next week if I decide to use fabric in those places. If I'm going to use paint or beads or puffy paint, then I'm not going to fill in these places because those things would probably be better done after quilting. I don't want to take a chance and hit my needle on some beads or anything like that. I also would like to do, uh, what are they, French knots? Is that a French knot? I better learn this stuff since I'm going to be joining Anitra in a wool applique project in our spare time. I really uh, would like to do maybe some French knots in the centers as like little uh, accents. So I think that would be gorgeous. Lots of things that we still have left to do. So I hope you stay tuned and you follow along. Maybe you'll see something that will inspire you to do on another project. Maybe... Uh, Maybe you've never seen some techniques that we're going to do and this will be the first time you've seen it and you can go on your own and learn more about it. So that would be awesome. But that's where we are, y'all. Yes, it's French knots. Okay, I got it right. <laughs> I better start learning this stuff. Uh, Anitra, many of you know Anitra from the live chat. She's usually here on Fridays. Uh, we both ordered the same wool applique pattern off of Etsy. And believe me, once I really started taking a look at it, um, I dived in way deeper than beginner level. This pattern that we ordered is like expert level, I do believe. Uh, but if you know me, <laughs> you know, I don't usually start in very simple at all. I usually go for the gusto and things just tend to work out and I'll learn a lot that way. The pattern that we ordered is very advanced. <laughs> Lots of hand stitches, all kinds of hand stitches. I'm a little intimidated. I'm not going to lie, but Maybe some of the stitches I'm learning, I can incorporate into this quilt and we'll learn it together. That would be awesome. Ella, I saw your art quilt design uh, with the crosses, the stained glass. How is that coming along? How are you doing? I saw you're using Inkscape to design it. Look at you learning all kinds of new stuff. Let me just clean off this mess as we chit chat. All our pieces are done for today. So now would be an awesome time if you have questions uh, about this quilt or anything else. I have a few minutes before I go. I kind of think that uh, before I go back to the camper today, I might do some more embroidery on this quilt top. How adorable would it be to uh, do some embroidery daisies like there is a daisy. I know you can't see it because it's so far behind me See right there eh, right there. I used some extra bits of her shirts and uh, Did an embroidered daisy on the quilt because she loves flowers Well, I thought I could take that daisy design and do the four corners see right there Right into part of the block and into the border on all four corners a little daisy I'm kind of thinking to do it but I'm also like I don't want to mess it up so K 
Can you show us the wool kit? I can. I can. Don't let me forget. Let me answer D Dari's question real quick. Do you have any specific Inkscape learning videos you would recommend? Troy Tube on Ink on YouTube. Uh, I think I think he's the one who has lots and lots of Inkscape videos. Check out Troy Tube. And then, other than that, just do a YouTube search uh, for Inkscape tutorials. And if you're really wanting to get specific, type in spe specific <laughs> search words like YouTube, uh, Inkscape, saving PDF, right? And then the tutorials really narrow down to a more niche uh, learning curve, right? Could you possibly reheat the piece that is causing too much wide black lines and remove it and then add a new piece slightly larger? I think if you were do if you're doing these pieces with freezer paper and a glue like Elmer's glue stick, then probably yes. I have not had real good success reheating up uh, pieces of fabric that have heat and bond on the back of them. Because you might be able to lift that fabric up. But what has happened is uh, if you don't replace it and cover all of the heat and bond that has adhered to the background fabric, you might have some glue exposed. I've not had real good success with it. But you might be able to be able to do it. All right, let me show you, uh, let me show you, concentrate, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> give me a second. Oh, okay. All right. My screen's going to go crazy for a second. <laughs> uh, let me go over to Etsy. That's where I got it from. Anitra got the whole kit. And her kit has already showed up. I just bought the pattern because I bought so much wool stuff at the show. Right? And it's just sitting in a box. Uh, so I have wool that I can make this out of let's see let's go to your account and purchases and reviews and here she is y'all in all her glory way beyond my comfort level <laughs> okay so it's called wool applique pattern kit uh, the shop name is horse and buggy country this particular pattern is called Jacobine Spring. Table runner, hand dyed, rug hooking, wool felt, felted wool applique. Oh, those are all her search words. Okay. So there she is. You can get the kit, which comes with all of those wool pieces, right? Uh, let's flip through some of the pictures. I just ordered the pattern. Isn't that gorgeous? Holy cow. <laughs> Look at all those hand stitches in there, y'all. Look at that. Like, I couldn't just start with a project that has a simple running stitch. We got to go and do all this. I don't even know what half of that is called. I think I see a chain stitch in there somewhere. It's gorgeous, though. Look at that. I think this is beyond expert level, but that, just ask me, that's what I think. 
It's gorgeous. I might have to simplify mine a little bit, y'all, which I'm okay with. I might have to just simplify it a little bit. But isn't it stunning? Nadine said, you can do it. <laughs> it does look very hard, doesn't it? I think it does. And that's just me being realistic. But it's gorgeous. So the pattern, let's see. The pattern it, uh, was $18. And if you get both the pattern and the kit, and the kit comes with all of the wool, not the thread, but the wool, uh, for $84. So I got the pattern because I already purchased a whole bunch of wool at the show. But uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing in our free time. <laughs> Let's see. Let's turn that off. There we go. <laughs> so that's what is going to be happening. Sherry, Sherry, hello, Sherry. Sherry said, you can do hard things. <laughs> you want to make that into a t-shirt, Sherry. You can do hard things. Gail said, will you be demonstrating your process for YouTube? Miss Gail, I have not reached out to the pattern maker for that, uh, so probably not. Uh I feel like if I'm working on anybody else's pattern specifically that I should reach out to them and first ask for consent. Is it okay? So this is probably something that uh, I'm going to work on in my off time. But the techniques that I learned, because I've been wanting to do wool applique for years, right? And then at the show, I bought some wool and some thread and it's sitting in a box since February <laughs> and I've not touched it. So the techniques that I learned, I would, yes, I would love to share with you. I would love to make videos, learning the stitches. We can do other stuff, right? But that particular pattern, uh, I won't be making videos on. But yes, whatever I learn, I want to share it all with you. Thank you, Ella. I bought this from uh, someone who was selling these a little while ago. Yeah, Sheila said it might be one of those pieces that you work on for a while and each piece feels like a victory. I already know that that's how it's going to be. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I already know. And like I said, uh, I don't just usually dive into anything simple. And actually, Anitra showed me the pattern, and she was excited. She showed it to me, and I was like, hey, you know what? Would you like a partner in crime with this project? We could do it together. She's like, yes. So I ordered the pattern before really, I mean, I saw the pictures, and I'm like, ooh, that's pretty. And then reality set in after purchasing the pattern, and I really just feel like it's way beyond... Well, I've never done wool applique before, and I'm not huge on hand stitches, so it's way beyond where I am at. But just like this quilt we're doing here, right, simplifying pieces to make it easier, I would be okay with simplifying it a little bit with some of the hand stitches. I mean, that was a lot of stitches. I'm sure that it would look stunning with uh, a simple blanket stitch around each one of the pieces if you want to know the truth, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, Celeste, he's all good. Yay. All right, everybody. Well, that's all of our pieces for this week. Uh, I hope you join me next week. And don't forget, uh, if you came in after we started, I showed what we're doing next Thursday night. Isn't that pretty? This will be Thursday, um, 
what is the date? The 14th, I think it's the date, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The thumbnail is already up on my channel if you want to head over there and uh, set a reminder so you don't forget. And if you want to grab uh, all the things that you need to make this, I did put a link down in the description box. And for those of you who have cutting machines, I did include the SVG. Uh, it's in my Etsy shop. All right, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I will see you next uh, Thursday. And then Friday, we're finishing up these pieces. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing this in its full glory. And then we're going to have lots of fun with embellishing and quilting. So I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Do something creative. And if it's nice outside, get outside for a little bit. Get some fresh air. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.